All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Court of the Rings on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. I'm getting all the streams going here, so i uh, going to have to... All right. Hello, everyone. Hear that. Some platforms choose to retain muting. Some don't play by the rules. So uh, that's what's up. Uh, just kind of getting things going here. I actually have some news. Uh, we published the producer's letter. Yeah, we published the producer's letter in the past hour here, and so I'll be going over that a little bit with you. Uh, doing a little bit of Q&A. Now, obviously, I'm not Reninia. I'm not the producer. Uh, but you know what I mean. Uh, we can. I can still answer some of your questions about it, and uh, I'm sure in the near future we'll have Reninia on himself to do some Q&A. Uh, the other programming note I would mention is that this is going to be the last Court of the Rings for a little while, and I'll have a little bit more information about that. I'm basically taking a break to reprioritize uh, a little bit of work priorities. Uh, one of those priorities being um, some news. Uh, we Paul having a better video output where I'm not uh, doing things like this, but no, <laughs> no, uh, the one of the motivating factors is actually I want to get a lot of work done on Lotro.com. We have a new website, and the new website's pretty awesome um, as long as we do some work on it to kind of uh, position it long term for growth, for sustainability, so that we can, as a company, really start maintaining those pages, rolling out guides for all the events, uh, in some cases for the first time, unfortunately. You know, our website has, has kind of long struggled with, with being maintained and all that sort of thing. So it's it's one of the priorities for 2022 here, right? This is the year. This is the time. The time is now. There's no putting it off, right? If I, if, if I say right now, well, we're going to get the new website out the door, it's going to have some articles on that, and we'll just take care of the rest later. That later is never going to come. And I'm well aware of it. And so that's what really motivated me here is like, all right, we've got a new website on Lotro and we're getting one in the coming weeks on the other game side. So let's basically make 2022 the year where the person in the, the group, the group uh, in charge of, of maintaining the website, you know, really gets to focus on that. Do it right. Um, get in a place where we have a rock solid foundation that looks great, answers your questions, what have you. And then long term, all we need to do is update it with the new stuff. That's the plan. In order to do that, I got to carve out a bunch of work hours. And so I had to kind of look um, in community, right? There's no one thing that takes ACM's time, it just isn't. You can't say, well, like sometimes you'll see in the forums, for example, you know, people will be like, all he does is spend all day on the forums. No, I don't. <laughs> all they do is post on Twitter and YouTube and maybe stream a little bit. No, that's not actually what happens. Uh, and so uh, basically you just have a whole bunch of small tasks that end up being a very full, full, interesting, exciting, awesome job. Right. But when all of a sudden you got to be like, uh, okay, so now let's essentially really kind of take care of some of the long-term needs that the website has had and uh, position it for, you know, this fall, because I hear something's happening this fall related to Lord of the Rings, uh, but also, you know, just uh, in general for long-term growth, right? We've got the new website. Wouldn't it be a shame if, if we just brought over a few of the old articles and then kind of let it be not entirely dissimilar to maybe what it was. So one of the things I'm doing is basically carving out the time to get that done. And that's, that's why today's going to be the last formal Court of the Rings for a little while. I'm going to be back, though. It's not like I'm not going to be on Twitch. I mean, you couldn't stop me if you... Well, you maybe, Twitch could maybe stop me, but you can't stop me. No, I you know what I mean. Um, I couldn't stop doing this kind of thing if I wanted to, because it's just in my DNA. It's what I do. And if you don't think so, just... Do a Google search for my name. <laughs> I've always been like this. So, uh, you know, I'll be back. I'll be back for, honestly, I'll be back in a couple weeks because we've got our anniversary coming up and I'm for sure doing a live stream for the anniversary. Uh, so I'll be back for that. But this formal Friday at noon thing is going to be going away. Uh, 
not just because of the couple hours a week it is for the actual thing, but then the prep work and the kind of small amount of post work, and it all just kind of adds up to, to that plus the beacon. Uh, the beacon is uh, going to be taking a hiatus for a few months as well. All the news, though, on the beacon uh, is still going to get out there, and my plan for that is to have all the community news, keep sending it in, Keep emailing, emailing it to uh, lotro at Um Ideally, the perfect email I get is, hey, this is Joe from the Kinship Joe, and uh, we're having a special Joe event uh, on Friday, 7 o'clock Eastern time on Laurelin. Here's a, we're calling it Joe, and here's a link to more information about it on the Lotro forums, right? And uh, what I can do about that then is sort of just get it out on social media, maybe even more than we have in the past, uh, and then still do all the kind of get it into the dev track or get the word out about it, all that sort of thing. So all that, my plan for all the community side of everything is to uh, lift up our social media, because uh, it's just something I've been wanting to do anyway. Uh, and start including more of that across our social networks rather than in the one place on the Friday. And I know there's value in having it in one place. That's why the beacon will almost certainly be coming back at some point. Uh, but just for a little while here, we're going to take a pause on it. All the sales and bonuses are going to get their own page now on Lotro.com. One of the, the long-term uh, things that we occasionally hear from you about, uh, but not so much because all the info is already on the forums. It's just an extra click away. Uh, but one of the things I'd really like to do is have our weekly sales and bonuses and events, you know, in a place for it on Thursday. Uh, and that's the plan. So that's the plan. Uh, we're going to, like we've been doing in the past couple of weeks, we're going to have all of that on uh, Lotro.com. So all the sales will be there. Community is going to be on all the networks. And I still want you to mail it in because it, that, you know, maybe 20% of everything you read in the beacon came into me rather than me finding it. Uh, and that's not a lot. That means the vast majority you still have to find. But that 20% helps a lot. And um, it also makes it kind of easy for me to, you know, maybe help you out a little bit with the event on couple hundred point codes or something like that, right? So so please do uh, send that stuff in, and uh, there we are. Uh, what else? We we do have big news, though, because we got, like, the producer's letter and all sorts of things. One more programming note, though, before I formally get going on the producer's letter. Uh, next week, we are scheduled to do the next casual stroll with Scenario. I'm going to finalize the time today, but my thinking... I think it'll be Tuesday rather than Wednesday because of uh, reasons. And it'll be at 2 p.m. And it'll be about Yandershire. So it's going to be our next new thing. And it's going to be a preview of the next new area by one of the people making it. And that'll be next Tuesday, 2 p.m. Twitch.tv slash Lotrostream. Casual stroll with Scenario. And that's going to be happening next week. All right. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Uh, so let me go, and um, that's why we didn't do a show this week, actually, because we couldn't do Yondershire this week just for, for various reasons. Uh, and so it was like, well, do we want to just do a general show this week when we could do Yondershire next week? And so we were like, well, let's just do the next casual stroll, kick it kick it off another week and, and get it done, right? So so that's ultimately what, what happened there. Uh, I am getting a, an Earl. I'm getting an Earl up for Earl attention. All right. All right, I am just getting, there we go. Now you can see me. You can see the a new producer's letter that went live at about 11 o'clock Eastern today on the new Lotro.com. You can read along if you want to. Uh, we do have our newest producer's letter. Remember, uh, these are intended to be shorter in duration. 
look ahead uh more quarterly ish um quarterly ish plus i guess i would say rather than try to hit a mark once a year and be accurate for the entire year which uh you know we're great at and have always been accurate with so there we go uh you know uh time to update y'all again by the way this this might be the first time we've ever used the word y'all in a producer's letter uh that is a reninia thing you're going to have to deal with it uh, on what we have going on. Before I get into that, just a reminder, uh, the person doing the writing here is Reninia, the producer on the Lord of the Rings Online. And uh, they're going to be writing these letters on a quarterly basis. You can see the previous letter also on Lotra.com came out in December. Here's what's going on between April and June. Update 33 is expected for late April. It will kick off our 15th anniversary celebration. Gives you some sense of the date there. And bring with it a few significant surprises. Uh, first, we're adding a new area. The northern region, known as the Yondershire, that you can get a preview of next week. And by the way, the, the reason why I, I haven't quite announced it on social media yet is I just want to make sure that we're ready to do the preview, I think, in conjunction with a Bulwer preview. What I don't know, though, is if we're going to be ready... By Tuesday 2 p.m. on Bull Roar, or if maybe that's going to be Wednesday or something like that. So a few of the kind of details still have to be worked out um, on this Friday, but that's the plan, is something like that. It's a uh, sparsely populated region of Moor Thicket and Fen, long been home to Hobbit recluses and troublemakers. Um, since the time of Bull Roar took, the Yondershire has squabbled. With the more comfortable parts of the Shire. The Arps start Lotho Sackville Baggins. Lotho a Sackville Baggins aims to bully the local hobbits. Not too keen on that thing. Explore the Yonder Shire. Experience delightful hobbit adventures. Our first expansion in the Shire in years. Uh, by this, we don't mean a like paid expansion, expansion, but regional expansion into the Shire in a very long time. Uh, some of you may have noticed we've been focusing on dwarves of late, and uh, we're kind of shifting our attention outward, as you've seen, with rangers and ruins here, um, with update 32, but we're bringing it to the Shire, and time, time for some awesome Hobbit action, so that'll be cool. Second, we're bringing back the Anniversary Festival. We are adding a new festival instance called a Flurry of Fireworks. Uh, you've been asked to aid with the greatest fireworks display Breland's ever seen. Setting up, things have gotten behind schedule. Dusk is approaching. You need to keep everyone on task, deliver the fireworks into the proper locations uh, on time. So this is, I mean, it, yeah, clearly this isn't, you know, the goal is not to test your raid skills on this one. Uh, this is an anniversary festival new instance uh, focused on fun. So hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, that'll be happening here for the anniversary this year. We also do have an exciting gift to share with everyone, but we will have more info about that when we get closer to our 15th anniversary. I know what he's talking about. I saw a picture of the thing this week, and I could not contain the squeeze. Just saying. Kind of for a hint. We got something pretty squee-worthy coming. All right, we're making some updates to VIP. This is pretty significant. Some of the smaller changes uh, we have not yet been in a position to announce. We're working on it. But we're excited to inform you VIP will now include the standard version of Mordor, Minas Morgul, and War of Three Peaks. Those three expansions. Why only those three? Well, here's the next announcement from Reninia. We are making some big changes to the Lotro store. You've heard uh, you know, him talk a little bit about kind of plans related to monetization and what have you, and that's what this was talking about. You've seen some of the first changes uh, a month ago with the release of Rangers and Ruins, which brought the premium wallet, gold currency cap, and uh, yeah, that was also part of it. Virtue, race, class, trait slots were free to all players. You know, that was with 32. And then in 33 here, we're making High Elf free. High Elf free for all players. Now everyone can play as those who beheld the beauty of Eleanor, uh, uh, that sort of thing. 
and play as Captain, Champion, Guardian, Hunter, Loremaster, Minstrel, Runekeeper, Warden, and Brawler throughout all middle. So, there you go. A uh, High Elf will be able to play all those classes. Now, you do have to have access to Brawler. And that, conveniently enough, brings Renania to the next change. Runekeepers, Wardens, and Bjornings will now be available for all players to play. We're going to be lifting the basic uh, purchase gate on those. So um, I'm not going to go into the classes. Hopefully you know what they are. Uh, there's another change that perhaps is the biggest we've made since Lord of the Rings Online went free to play. All quests, areas, instances, and expansions released between launch back in 2007 up to and including Helm's Deep will be free. Flat free. Quest, explore, craft your way to level 95 uh, for free. That's the goal. So, in terms of content, get all the way up there without having to worry about anything. As part of our celebration, uh, I need to go back and add a return, a carriage return. As part of our celebration, we'll have some announcements lined up. Stay tuned in April. April's next month. And during this time, we'll be making progress on Honor, bringing players to Isildur's desecrated fortress city of Minas Morgul and the level cap of 130. What? Honor is like, they're growing, they're growing up so fast. April 13th. Less than a month later, on May 4th, Shadowfax is progressing all the way up to Rohan, Helm's Deep, and level cap of 95 which will now be accessible to any VIP at no added cost. See what we're doing there? All right. And finally, at the end of June, Treebeard and Shadowfax will be both making further steps. On June 29th, Treebeard will make its second jump, entering the dangerous forest of the Mirkwood, and Shadowfax will continue marching forward uh, to the half-ruined lands of Gondor and Old Anoria. Uh, we're also working on performance uh, and lag. I know that we have uh, some work being done on the way the quest system communicates with itself and the rest of the game. And a few things like that, fairly deep engineering things, that we are pretty hopeful will make uh, visible improvements in the coming months. Uh, we are continuing to work on class balance. Uh, as a matter of fact, at 11 o'clock this morning, there was a Teams meeting on it. And uh, essentially, our immediate roadmap, I think, is to uh, get Brawler DPS raised fairly significantly in the near future. You know, we, we know, we've known that Brawler needs some additional DPS work, and we're going to be doing that work, I think. That's really kind of the, well, the, that meeting was really about prioritization, and that's the priority. Next. Nick should be uh, hopefully getting Brawler DPS up in a little bit. Uh, assuming everything goes out. See, that's the problem with this. You put together a list like that uh, of, of kind of order of what you're doing, and order of what you're doing doesn't always translate to order of release. So keep that in mind, right? One thing takes longer than another to test. The other thing gets signed off. The other thing is still being worked on. The other thing gets out before the thing you worked on earlier, right? So that's how it happens. Uh, the other piece uh, that I know that we're planning to do a little bit of work on is a little bit of uh, a very small, very small amount of work to maybe bring a couple of champion things in line. You know what I'm talking about, right? It won't be too bad. So there we go. And uh, then we're also going to be uh, doing some other things that I guess I just don't feel comfortable talking about yet, but there is a list essentially put together. Anyway, next main point is we're probably going, we're almost certainly going to, work-wise, we're focusing on Brawler DPS next. And release-wise, it'll probably be either that or perhaps a few adjustments to uh, Champion there, uh, along with a few m more minor adjustments to other classes and races that kind of thing all right and we've reached the end of a letter uh as long as i am on 
the new Locher.com. Let me uh, quick scroll and show you the other bit. Uh, this went live. This, not that. It's a little hard to see. It, it drags rather than lets me use my scroll mouse. I'm not actually sure. I don't, and that, that lowers the thing. All right, let me do it. It's hard on Twitter to use XSplit to get a web page working, which is a, an unfortunate me problem uh, being a streamer who works for a video game studio. Uh, I, I think I should switch to OBS. I don't know. I have two bits that I want to bring to your attention before I move on. First thing, we got a new, uh, we've got a spring festival happening. I want to talk a little bit about that. So, uh, spring festival kicked off yesterday, 10 o'clock Eastern. And, uh, I've got the date in here. It runs through April 5th being shut off at 3 a.m. Eastern on April 6th. Uh, and it is the spring festival. The spring festival is largely uh, an encore this year. It's a repeat of last year's spring festival. We did add a couple of uh, housing items, a pet, uh, a couple other minor things, but uh, that is where we are, is it really is basically a repeat. We're working on the anniversary. Uh, I think that's essentially the challenge we ran into is is having 33, the anniversary, um, which is a big one because it's our 15th. Um, and then all the other kind of stuff that you've been talking about or we've been talking about, you know, going on. So we just kind of had to go do a, a a light pass on the spring festival this year. But it, it'll be uh, back in a fuller state in the future. But one thing that's new this year is what I was talking about related to Lotro.com. Something like this guide has existed in the past on Lotro.com, but was a very different sort of guide that maybe didn't always... We heard feedback that I didn't always provide information about, say, okay, but how do I get there? What do I do? You know, that kind of thing. And so, uh, other than these cool new art things too, which are sweet, uh, I'm doing things like say, putting coordinates into the guides, uh, now on this is, this is by Cordo edict. Um, and, uh, a few other things like that. So the goal with this spring festival guide, I think you'll find that it's more comprehensive by a pretty significant measure than the sort of thing that you have perhaps seen in the past on Lotro.com. And this is sort of the template, at least for now, that I'm intending to use going forward, not just, say, for the anniversary event. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to the wedding in June. Uh, we have just too much else going on, but we'll see something like that, though. You know, and, and do this for just about everything, so that when you want to go to the event, as a player who maybe is fairly new to the community even and doesn't know all these awesome community guides, and I will get to that part of it in a second, um, you're just going to be able to get a much better sense of what we need to do, where you need to go, and what you can do when you get there. All right, so that's that's the goal. Uh, what this guide is not going to do, and this is kind of what I was thinking of and why I'm bringing up the community side of it, is we've had awesome guides for years on the Lotro side, and they're all coming from the community. You know, uh, Dottie's Lotro Guides, Fibro Jedi, Laurel Lunarian, uh, Deco Doom Liu. I mean, the, the list, list goes on and on, right? They're still going to have a purpose. Uh, because I my intention is I want this page to be more evergreen. And I fully recognize that the task of getting, say, like images up for every new item for the event long term it just tends not to work very well. So this will be updated like when the events are updated and that sort of thing. But individual loot lists, that kind of thing, that's where these community guides are going to remain the absolute best place to go, including looks on, like, say, the cosmetics and things like that. Don't use the word evergreen, but that might be what's up. All right. The goal is basically at any point that you would encounter that page, the information would 
be current and complete to what it captures. All right, I want to mention this too. We're extending the time available to earn the leading the charge deed for the Hidden Horde of Abnankara for all tiers, all tiers, through May 18th. This will be another one of those shut off 3 a.m. Eastern on May 19th things. We expect Tier 4 to arrive in early April, uh, so in a couple of weeks, and Tier 5 will be released closer to our anniversary, um, which is April 25th, so... Or, yeah. God, I hope I got that right. Thank you. <clears throat> there we are. That's what's up. Uh, I did want to get the word out about that because we have a lot of raiders uh, looking to get that deed. Uh, I hear, I hear that our tier three is pretty tough. I hear our tier three is pretty tough, and maybe we need to uh, uh, see see what's going on. I, I, you know, I've always been a fan in general of making raids tough, uh, but then I also am not a huge raider, so. Uh, I would be curious to know basically how you feel about the current state. Do you like it at its current difficulty rate, uh, tier one, tier two, tier three? Are you enjoying, you know, tier three here? Or are you just like, oh, yeah, but I, I'm not, you know, it's just, no, it's not working. You can't, right? You know, want to know that sort of thing. So, all right, let us get to chat. Will we be seeing any new Lore Master staff cosmetics? I have not heard of any plans to do Lore Master staff cosmetics. I've not heard or seen anything with those words in it. So I'm going to say no. Uh, hopefully in the future, though. Uh, the new Yondershire area. Uh, I don't have the level range in front of me. While I'm answering maybe a different question let me see if i can kind of behind the scenes poke around a bit and see if i can't get you an answer uh the intention though is it is uh a area more in line with the level range of the space around it so uh you know it's not going to be you know 140 as i understand it All right. Yeah, he hinted that it might happen when he did the last poll for the show about uh, being able to do a casual stroll through Yondershire. We really have been enjoying these. He seems to be enjoying them, and you seem to be enjoying them. And, and they're kind of providing a nice archival long-term benefit because you get to you get some nice almost like dvd style commentary for these landscapes that that'll be just as cool five years from now as today and that that kind of content's great so you know we're, we're pretty much down for keeping doing this for all the new stuff uh moving forward as long as everyone's still digging it so Uh, VIP will include three X packs. That is access right, not ownership. Yes, yes. It gives you access to those three packs. Right. Uh, you know, the Yuna Yanni, uh, over on Twitch is basically like, yeah, but I bought the thing, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I hear ya. Um, you know, we've been in, of recent years been trying to expand our free quite a bit here on Lotro. And, uh, that always is going to kind of come with it. The other side of the coin, which is that, um, some people in the past, you know, purchase the thing. And if we make it free, well, you know, maybe you, you have to worry about how they feel about it and things like that. And, and it's something that we do consider. Uh, we're hopeful that you appreciated the support of our game and that you got lots of benefit out of it during the, 
um, in some cases, decade plus since your purchase. Um, and in some cases we're doing things, uh, but I, in this case, I don't think we are. Worth noting those X packs were also available for a very low amount of Lotro points for a pretty long time as well. So in general, uh, current player access to that content is quite high. But uh, this is also positioning for the future, right? So, um, yeah. Um, no. Uh, someone on Twitch is asking if the lack of new cosmetics for the Spring Festival is an indication of sort of a shift in the way we're doing it. You know, are we going to just basically make you buy it in the store from now on? No, this was specifically about uh, needing to prioritize a lot of itemization, art, content, etc. work um, in this February, March, April, June kind of time frame with the 15th anniversary uh, release of update 32 development and release of update 33, uh, things like that, right? And the other projects are working on up to and including all that lag uh, kind of investigation and work we've been focusing on, et cetera. So we've been pretty busy and, and ultimately we just sort of had to do one of those things where it's like, well, um, would we rather do this or would we rather do this? Do you want to do this or do we want to do this? And we sort of decided that since we have a lot going on during this time frame already, that perhaps we could get away with a little bit of a lighter spring festival this year. Um, and so we do have, you know, some new stuff, but not a maybe quite to the scale of a full uh, thing, which is why we're calling this year's spring festival a, an encore. Let's use that that word let's call it an encore a repeat an encore it's not quite a repeat though because there's there is a few new things right so repeat asterisk re repeat ish it's a repeat ish all right It's true. Uh, the Harvest Math Festival this past year was also a repeat. Now, honestly, I think for in many ways for the same general reasons. Um, and it's something we're, we're aware of. You know, we want to make sure that we do provide long-term support for our festivals. So I, I think in some cases we felt uh, that we've done quite a bit recently, and so maybe we could take a little break. You know, it was... It, given that something had to give, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, of course, if you feel differently about that, that's totally valid, and we would love to. Uh, Jashinka, I do not have word about the ability to transfer off the old worlds of Lotro. I know that that's been a project that's taken forever. It is a priority, but of late, uh, lag work had to be prioritized over it. And, uh, but it is something that has been worked on fairly recently a little bit and is still a project we are intending to do. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I've got a good answer as to when. Let me see if I can do find that one in a quick search as well. When is the curator coming back? Uh, I don't think I've got. I don't think I have that written down myself yet. Um, one more thing. One more place to look. Let's see if I can get this for you. Okay, uh, so yeah, it looks like we currently have the curator set to come back around, no big surprise, I guess, around the anniversary. So a little bit before the anniversary, about a week or about a week, I guess, before the anniversary currently, the curator is set to come back. So. I 
All right. Let me head over to YouTube. Uh, no word about DX12 uh, Chakra. And were you, were you, I say bothering me. Were, were you messaging me this week? I had a whole bunch of people. It was like, it was like there was a group of people doing a, a push for DX12 compatibility in, in my world here this past week. I, I was hearing from people on Discord and Facebook and Twitter. Um, fairly unusual. The answer I don't think is that we are intending to do DX12 compatibility anytime soon. I do think it more likely that we will be doing some work to try to solve a, a sort of long-term installation issue with our games where a little too often players need to run the Microsoft end user DirectX runtime installation. And I bet if you've been playing our games long enough, you know what I was going to say before I even said it. Uh, and that is that is really an old um, theoretical, but not actually backwards compatibility issue between DX12 and DX9. Um, and that is something that we have been working for a long time to try to solve. We actually do have some steps in place in like the initial installation and launcher that does solve the problem nowadays for a whole bunch of people, but still does not solve the problem for others, um, myself included, generally. So it um, is one of our kind of longer term things. So I think in terms of DirectX, that is probably what we would see more likely than 12 compatibility. And yes, we will have more graphics. They might not be better, but we'll have more of them. All right. Uh, character creation customization is always something we want to provide as much as we can. I don't think there's ever a time where we wouldn't like to see more uh, avatar customization. It's always a fairly significant project. I would expect to hopefully be able to get to that in the future, though. I, I think that, um, you know, perhaps there's more that we'll be able to say about that someday. Uh, will Yondershire be at the size of a quest pack or a filler zone? Well, it's kind of a loaded word. Uh, it is not a massive update. I mean, we're not talking like Moria scale here or anything. Thing, right so i guess to that extent it is us expanding into parts of the region that had previously not been brought into the game so i mean i guess from a technical definition it is absolutely uh intended to fill a space on the map that did not exist prior uh i think it's gonna be pretty cool hopefully you like it But I think in terms of size, yeah, it's probably, it's definitely a quest pack. And I think it's probably about, it's not out of scope in any way for what we've done of recent. So I would expect it to be about what you're used to seeing. But more hobbits. Uh, so, Mitch, on YouTube, if you um, literally just made a purchase that is impacted by this morning's release of the new producer's letter, I would recommend getting in touch with account support through help.standingstonegames.com. They are often able to assist people in, in that position. It depends. It depends on circumstances so i don't want to get too much into it but especially if like you literally just bought it or something like that you know we've we've had a few tickets it was like you know i made the purchase i went to the website and literally 15 seconds ago the thing that i just bought is now free you know it'll be fine don't worry about it 
it, but uh, how far back does that all go? Kind of depends. So. Are we ever going to get on Google Stadia? I don't know. I've never heard of any plans to do that. I don't know. I, you know, it's interesting when you think about the possibility of what some of these more recent online gaming services can offer, right? You know, we're quickly moving into a world where downloads are going to start feeling like cassette tapes, you know? And, uh, and installation folders are going to feel like floppy disks, you know? And, and so we may well find ourselves, regardless of what I'm saying here today, in five, seven years, just pretty much looking back without and going, what were we thinking, you know? But I don't know that we're necessarily ready to flip that switch in 2022 here either. So I I don't know. Uh, we have not, as a business, looked into it. But, you know, we certainly play lots of video games. And uh, we see it too. And so we'll see. We'll see what would ever be possible there. Way, way back in the day, if you remember. Way back in the day. We were actually a little bit on the vanguard of some of that stuff. And our partnerships with uh, some of the kind of technology startups and that that were themselves way on the vanguard too much so in some cases as it turned out because the their vision was hard to bring to reality right but anyone remember like the old uh, like happy cloud and that kind of thing that that used to go on that that's kind of the that's cloud in, in that case it was used to serve the rest of your installation so that you could kind of get remember into the game super quick um and it essentially meant the creation of two installation packages. You had the starter package and then the that could get you going. And then everything that was in that experience had to be in game data, right? You couldn't you couldn't have a sword or an orc that wasn't in game data and show up in the thing while the rest was downloading. So you end up kind of having this little kind of mini package and then mega package. Uh, that's how a lot of those cloud services worked back in like, what, 2011, 2012. But... Um, it would make sense for a lot of studios to strongly consider whether online cloud services, you know, make sense for them. I mean, just think about what you save as a gamer, right? You don't have to download a big MMO patch. You don't have to worry about updating that MMO patch. All you got to do is just click a button, boom, you know? So I, that to me, that seems like the obvious future someday. I don't know when that's going to happen. I'm definitely not announcing anything today, but I'm just saying, uh, to answer your question, will we ever, I could say we have no plans today, but will we ever? Seems unlikely. That we would not. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between those quests, etc., being free and the Lotro free quest coupon? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, so if you've already got them free from that coupon, then you're good. Yes. Last year's die offerings are still available for Spring Leaves token barter. Is it supposed to alternate back to Shire Plum and Bull Roarer's Green this year? We had a conversation about that. Uh, it was uh, a choice to go with keeping it, uh, since we we're doing a repeat of the Spring Festival this year, to keep it there for this year. Um, I think there remains an outstanding question about whether we actually want to put in a process to no, no matter what, uh, flip the dies. And we didn't this time, ultimately. But it, because we didn't do it this time, or in some cases the first time, we're starting to hear from players like yourself who would really prefer that we be rock solid no matter what. Like even if nothing changes in the event, at least do that, you know? And that's something we're we're considering. We'll, we'll see what we want to do with that long term. So. Uh, 
Uh, Max says, do I expect an influx when the series drops? Yes. I mean, I think that would happen even if we did absolutely nothing. Just because of the way the internet works. But yes. Gosh, I hope so. Yeah, I would totally say yes. Uh, we've seen that on like the other game side, for example. Um, when occasionally there have been big things with that IP that have happened. Um, you know, not maybe to this scale, but you know, Dungeons and Dragons is, is pretty hot right now. And there's just kind of a natural lift that happens whenever a movie comes out about it. Actually, wait, as if someone's fighting a dragon with a sword in the movies, you know, there's a pretty good chance we're seeing at least a little bump from a few people, regardless. That's just kind of how the world works. Which is great. And we love it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chris. I will let Renania know that. Uh, I don't have a formal date on the next, on the first, as it will turn out, the first reward track reset. I can't remember what was stated in the producer's letter last on that, but I thought Renania had mentioned that back in December. Uh, I don't think it was a formal exact date, though. But it should be coming fairly soon, I would think, if if we debuted it around then. and yeah, I would expect probably around the anniversary would be my guess. Uh, maybe specifically update 33, but let me get back to you on that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, my, my estimation is around the anniversary would be my think, thinking on it. I mean, it just makes sense. Uh, but let me, let me formally get together with some people and see if that's true or not. Um, I guess, what, what do we got? We got 1250 here. We're actually moving pretty good. Um, one of the things I'd love to be able to do more of is uh, get in on an admin and show off a few things. One of my plans in pulling back a bit on the live broadcast is, and I know maybe this is just a fantasy in my head, but I, I think I'm, I'm at least going to try it. And that is to get more short form video up on our website. Um, right now we are in a position and have been, I think, for a little while where we're doing some pretty good trailer work. I mean, you you personally may have, you know, a personal opinions about each trailer or what have you, but I think in general, we're rocking the trailers more than we've rocked them in a long time. Uh, in terms of being able to consistently put out trailers and things like that. And that's not an accident. And uh, I want to mix it in with a little more short form video so that when, like, uh, Yondershire comes out, there's a one minute long video something like that right uh and in that very short video it's just like hey update 33 is out yonder sure you want to see some hobbits here's how to get there speak to this guy that's what they look like right that kind of thing um i hope to do that i'm going to do that in the next year and we'll see how it goes it could be that in you know by the time let's just say my estimation is that i should be able to get both websites rock solid really uh with these changes that i was talking about earlier within by the fall so why would ex my expectation is by the fall both games websites are gonna rock um and so i would expect that at that point then we'll we'll kind of re-evaluate a lot of this stuff and be like well do people even want us to go back? Do even people want me back on like a Friday live stream? Maybe by that point, people are going to be like, no, nah, wait, the new way is way better, right? So, you know, uh, I want to leave myself open to that possibility. 
Um, but otherwise, my expectation is we'll be reopening the beacon and the live streams and kind of getting back to what what you're more used to from me here by by the fall. So. It is. It is that time of the year where the United States is one hour off. Uh, we have started observing daylight saving time last Sunday, and I hear Europe is uh, a few few weeks yet. So we're in that weird position where we are minus five GMT. Daylight saving time is always. Did I get that right? Daylight saving time is always minus five. Daylight standard always minus four, something like that. Uh, but rather than being the typical, if you're over, say, London to Germany offset, somewhere like four, five, six hours from us instead of. What are saying? Three, four, five instead of five, four, five, six, whatever. One hour. It was six, now it's five for the next couple of weeks over in like France and Germany. Unfortunately, thanks to uh, the use of British time, we can't speak. We have your imperial measurement system. But, uh, you know, that makes things even more further complicated. So I guess what I'm saying is that uh, just deal with it. The next couple of weeks, I'm probably wrong. You're probably wrong. The whole world's probably wrong. Maybe we'll do about it sometime. Do something about it sometime. Hmm. Oh, trying to. I was hoping to show something off on the stream here. I don't know. Do it. I was hoping to end the show with a little look at something cool, but I don't know if I can do it. Uh... Yes. Now let's see if I can actually do it. Uh, give me a sec. Trying to pop up some new Spring Festival stuff. I'm just not sure if I can do it. I get the page to look. All right, well. Yes, Eastern Standard Time is minus five. Eastern Daylight minus four. It'll be all over soon. True. <laughs> Why I can't... Fortunately, my team's... My chat... My team's chat is just not working, so I can't proc the item I was going to proc here. I was going to show you off the new pet from the Spring Festival here to wrap up the show, but... It's not working, so let's just pull an audible and not do it. I thought we were getting rid of DST. I'm in favor. I think I think we maybe are as a world. Uh, I was a reporter working for a radio newswire back when Indiana, the state of Indiana, had a long, like, 21-hour legislative debate about daylight saving time. Um, for much of the U.S.'s history with DST, Indiana had been one of the exceptions. And I was a state house reporter, a political reporter, when that debate was happening in Indiana, and I was the state house reporter for Indianapolis. So, as you can imagine, it was uh, quite the uh, quite the experience uh, getting it all all right then. But I, I, it was fascinating. And at that time, they were like, "We need to join the rest of the world." But maybe just what less than a decade, a, a, less than two decades later, the rest of the world's joining them. So there we are. Yep. yep. 
All right. Um, well, you know, I think we're pretty much wrapping up the show then. I don't know that I've got a whole lot more I can mention, talk about. Uh, I did mention the Spring Festival. Please do uh, go check out that guide if you want to on locher.com And please do support the community guides as well because they still have your best stuff uh, in terms of like what the new things look like, uh, some tips, tricks, guides, you know, how to run the events. But you want to find out about the events itself, go to locher.com. Hope you enjoy the new producer's letter. Like I say, we are on the cusp of doing some cool things. The next bull roar should be a preview of Yondershire update 33. Uh, could happen uh, soon, next week, maybe even. We'll see. And uh, we're going to have a casual stroll next Tuesday as well. So thank you everyone for watching Court of the Rings. And uh, I will see you on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook in a couple of weeks for an anniversary stream. Uh, otherwise, there'll be kind of less scheduled things like Q&As and what have you that we'll continue to do here in the coming months. So thank you everyone for being here, and I will talk to you again soon.